engineering is, is real, it's alive, it is coming, it, in fact it is here, and we have now approximately to Christmas at the latest next year to re-engineer Wilkes Community College. It is going to take a great deal of energy, it is going to take a great deal of work on everyone's part, especially the teaching faculty who will have to revisit, redesign all curricula, rewrite all course syllabi as we approach the 97, fall of 97. And that is going to be a mammoth undertaking, probably very comparable to that of the self-study process that you've just completed. Uh, so re-engineering is something we're going to hear a lot about, we're going to learn a lot about. I am serving on the statewide steering committee for re-engineering. I chair one of the four primary teams working with re-engineering. So you have someone in me that, uh, that can guide you through this process, I think, with the least amount of pain. I will be calling a meeting of all of you probably within the first month, uh, sometime in March, to share with you what re-engineering is all about and begin the process of re-engineering this college. And again, all of that is scheduled for implementation in the fall of 97, which is inclusive of the semester system, which I applaud. Absolutely think it's one of the best things that's happened to us in a long, long time. And the only thing that perhaps can be that is the new work that's being done in the system in transfer through House Bill 739. Uh, 739. Uh, the House of 1985 passed the bill, and it calls for the community colleges and the universities to work together to create a comprehensive transfer plan so that students in the future won't have to negotiate course by course, institution by institution, their transfer of credit. But this hopefully will all be comprehensive. One deal, and what applies to one member of the 16 member university system will apply to all 16 as it applies to transfer, and I, and I applaud that. And I think that's a, a result of some of the good work that's being done among the uh, three boards uh, of our systems as they continue to meet to, to provide that seamless experience for students transitioning from high school through the community colleges and through the universities. So there's some, some good work going on and I'll be glad to share that with you at, at our first meeting. I mentioned the fiscal constraints. We're going to deal with that. And I hope I hope, I know, that a year from now we won't be using those terms any longer. We're going to, we're going to get into that and we're going to solve the problems. Uh, techni technology development, we've begun. Wilkes has begun, we've all begun. We've got a long way to go. It's going to take some energy, it's going to take some money to develop the technology. But it's not a question of if we do it, it's a question of how quickly can we do it. And uh, I will be there to to support and to encourage and to hopefully find the resources necessary to, to continue <coughs> developing our technology both in the classroom and in our offices as well. Marketing. Marketing is something that we have come to learn we don't do well with marketing, particularly at the program level. So one of the first things that I'm going to be doing and I'm, I'm working on it now is put together a marketing plan that we can use as an institution that you as individual faculty and staff members can use in your offices to uh, enhance and improve your marketing work that comes from your, your respective areas. Marketing is going to be critical to our future. We know that the traditional age students are declining. We know that the numbers of working people and senior people are growing. We know that we're going to have to change the way we package, the way we deliver our educational services. And we also have to become expert marketers in the process so that we can alert and form the big response to those, the, the changing environment in which we exist. So I'm going to be working with you heavily in these next months with marketing. And of course, the, the outcome of that will hopefully be increased enrollment. That's what we're about, serving people. Uh, so that will be an area that uh, I will give much attention and I will be sharing that with you as we become better marketers uh, as a college and as individuals. Construction, of course, is big on the agenda at Wilkes as it is on most campuses. And uh, I will become deeply involved with that immediately and uh, 
to do what I can to expedite the, the construction process. Uh, it is slow under the best of circumstances, and our experiences to date here have not necessarily been the best of circumstances in that, um, not unlike a lot of colleges, when, when we build the projects, they come in substantially higher than the money is available. And part of that's part of that's inflation. Part of that is the reality that at the same time we, as a community college system, are putting out over $200 million in construction. So are the prisons of this state uh, putting out a lot of construction work, as well as the public schools, some, and the universities a great deal. So all of us in the market at the same time has just driven the prices out of the roof. So uh, it's not uncommon, but we're going to have to work through it. We're going to have to get these, these uh, construction projects underway and, and, and completed so that we can all enjoy the benefits of those. Those are some of the thoughts I have about some of the immediate issues. There are many, many others. Uh, and I'll come to learn even more, I'm sure, as I uh, talk with you. <clears throat> Let me just summarize, and I do want to open the floor to some questions. Because again, I didn't know what to say. I just wanted to let you meet me, let you hear from me a little bit. Uh, if you have questions that I haven't, uh, about things that I haven't addressed, I'd like to hear those, and I'll try to respond to those. We'll, we'll have to cut it off in, in a few minutes, but, but I'd like to hear those. But in closing, let me just say that you know, I look forward to working with you. If you didn't note in the tapes or if you haven't heard otherwise, I'm excited about being here. I am going to be thankful for when I can come and spend full time concentrating on Wilkes Community College. I have spent the last month at the North Community College doing six months work, as you can well imagine, trying to wrap up all the loose ends and leave my predecessors uh, the way I would want to be left and, and uh, tying together those loose ends and making the plans for the immediate future. Uh, so I've been doing that. Uh, we have our house on the market in Kinston. Uh, that, however, that's only been since I've remodeled one room in the house and took care of 101 honeydews on, on the list that my wife had that I had procrastinated over these past years and not doing, but I had to do it now that we're going to sell the house, give it to somebody else, of course, new dishwasher, new faucets, the whole thing. So I have played plumber, I have played electrician, and I have done it all. Uh, and I'm just going to be tickled to death <laughs> to get up here and to be able to concentrate on you and on this college and its future. And uh, all I will say to you is I look forward to working with you, and I pledge my all to you in that endeavor. I'd like to throw it open now if anybody has any questions. <coughs> Dr. Turner. Yes. As you know, the academic team's position is, is vacant, and we all have interest in, in the individual affair. Do you fulfill that position? In fact, the Senate has uh, written a position statement regarding that, and would like to present that position statement to you. Do you have a time frame when uh, that would be appropriately presented? Be your arrival at a later date or what? Any time after 8 a.m. March 1, I'd be glad to receive that. Uh, yes, we have two key positions open. We have the, uh, in effect, the administrative services area as well as the instructional area. Uh, I don't know how long I can do it all. <laughs> I don't want to do it too long. There's enough other for me to do. Uh, but I do have the advantage of experience as Dean of Continuing Education, as Executive Vice President and Vice President for Instruction as well. I'm currently the Dean of the College at Lenore uh, in my role as Executive Vice President. Uh, I oversee all functions of the college on a daily basis and have for the last seven and a half years. So I do have some working experience and knowledge of, in all of the areas. Uh, I will be anxious to determine uh, if and when those positions should be filled. I will be open, as I had stated earlier, I will be open to any of your comments and thoughts regarding that. If you have collectively, through your Senate, uh, come up with some qualities that you would like to see in that uh, new person, I'd be glad to receive them. Uh, of course, I will reserve the right as, as your president to, to make the final judgment in terms of the qualities that, that would be required for any position. And, uh, but I hope that we can decide on that rather quickly. Uh, I'm going to go back to the fiscal constraints. I'm not sure how, how quickly we can do that. Uh, July 1st might be the first window uh, of looking at that. But that's something that I have on my mind. That is something that I'll be working with, and I'll be glad to receive any and all suggestions about the qualities, not the individuals. Thank you. Dr. Burns, I'd like to ask your thoughts on concerning fiscal restraint. 
a dilemma we've been in for a number of years. Uh, our funding is based on how many students we have enrolled 30% through our quarter, and then that's averaged uh, fall, winter, and spring quarter. And my understanding, please correct me if I'm wrong, in the university system, their funding formula is based on how many students there are the first day of fall semester. And that's all. I, I think that's inherently uh, has added to our problem. It's in favor. There's no question but that the 30% point uh, is a problem. And the recent moves to contact hours in a number of program areas. The university, it's my understanding that the universities get to count anyone they have on the 15th day. But unlike the community colleges who receive an average of about $60,000, $62,000 uh, per student, uh, total, uh, the university receives about $126,000, and that varies from university to university, and it goes up to $150,000 for that very same student. So we're, we're working at a disadvantage, certainly, in the, in the number of dollars we receive per student. Uh, they are experimenting currently. In fact, uh, whoever's reporting the FTEs here understands that, that this year we've been required to, to report both the 10 and 30. Uh, dual system, and I think they're trying to determine whether or not one will, will yield a better result for us. I'd like to see it after the ad period. If it has to be system-wide, then, then name it the fifth day or something like that. That, that would be my preference of where to go with it. Uh, nobody's asked me recently, but I do volunteer that every now and then. Uh, we should be counted for every student that enrolls, that registers, because at that point, we commit the resources. We offer the classes. Doesn't make a difference if one student in that class or 50 students in that class. We've committed, our costs are the same. We've advised, we've counseled, we've admitted, we've gone through the whole works, we've incurred all the costs, and we ought to be able to count those students. And I hope that in the future, as they revisit through reengineering the formula, uh, that they'll take those kinds of things into consideration. But I do think that in this next year, that they will determine whether or not the 10 or the 30 percent is better for us, and we will probably, I hope, we'll go with the better. One. Other questions? The quiet group. You're saving your questions until I walk around, right? <laughs> I want you to hold me to that. I really do. And sometimes, you know, you get bogged down and don't get out. And if I don't, if you don't see me in a while, you. Be sure next time you see me after that to remind me, hey, I thought you were walking around. That'll jog my memory and maybe I'll get back on track. But thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being a kind audience today. I look forward to working with you. Together, we can and will do great things. But we do need to work together. As your president, one of the questions in the second interview from the Board of Trustees, it was a governance kind of question, asked me about communications, et cetera, with, with the board. The only thing I ask of you is that the board of trustees has designated me as the sole administrative agent for the college. It is with me and through me that, that, that we'll communicate. So one of the things I would want to say today is that if you have things that are of concern and, and you would want them known by the administration and, and perhaps if I deem it appropriate to share it with the board, please share it with me. Uh, I would expect you extend those courtesies to me and uh, not go straight to the board. And I have asked the very same thing of the board in my interview. And being the sole administrative agent, uh, I had asked that all communications back down through the organization, the college, come through me, hold me responsible, hold me accountable, <coughs> give me the tools to do the job. So I uh, hope you'll respect that. And uh, again, thank you so much. I look forward to working with you. I will see you around campus sometime after 8 a.m. on March 1. Thank you. <laughs>